Well, amen. How good it is to be in the house of prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're grateful and thankful for the opportunity you give us to worship this evening. A number of our people are away, but we're here, and we're grateful for those who are present. We thank you, Lord, for each family represented. We ask that you bless in our service. Have your way as we worship together in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing soul to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many have lost with my soul from without within, but my Lord. Turn over to page 220. Try to 
Turn over to page 236. My turn. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 13. And we'll look at verse number 36 as a text verse of Scripture. Acts 13, verse 36. When you get there, say amen. All right. Notice what the Scripture says here. For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Lord, thank you for this scripture. May it teach us the importance of serving the purpose of God. In your mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. You know, 
many people have no clear purpose for their lives. None whatsoever. Even believers go through life never realizing God's plan for them. Only through discovering God's purpose for us can we truly experience genuine fulfillment in our lives. God has a unique plan for your life. Every one of you. You might ask yourself the question, what is that unique plan? Well, Paul describes the life of David by mentioning that he served by the will of God his own generation. You can honor the Lord with your daily choices. Choices you make at work. Most of us, we don't work anymore. But there was a time that we did. Choices you make at home. and choices that you make as you walk out into the community that you live in. You need to understand that serving God is not limited to the church. Too many times we place emphasis on the church house. But it's just as important for us to place emphasis on our house and serve God there as well. Serving God is not limited to the church house. Don't misunderstand me. I thank God for this little house of prayer. Been here for a lot of years. I enjoy driving by and looking at the steeple now that it's clean. It really looks good. And the church house has a steeple on it. I like that. I pray that as people drive by this property that the Spirit of God just reaches out and pulls them. That they feel God's Spirit as they drive by this church. But serving God is not limited to this church. Nor is serving God limited to missionary work. The best way, the best way to experience a fulfilled life is just to live for the Lord in everything that you do. The psalmist said in Psalm 34, verse 10, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. God will always provide for his children. 
Now you may ask, how did David serve God by the will of God? Five things that I want you to notice. First of all, by working as a shepherd. David was the youngest of eight sons. Do we have any youngest in here? You're an only child. Right. I see that. Well, I'm the oldest. Well, I'm the I'm the oldest child in my family. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Many of you sitting here may be a little bit older than I am. I have a younger brother. And I thank God for him. But David was a shepherd, the youngest of eight sons. And he was given the task by his father to tend the sheep in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And in that humble role, David submitted to his father's authority. He protected the animals. He learned how to fight courageously, a valuable skill that he later put to use as a warrior. So David learned to serve God by working as a shepherd. Secondly, David learned to serve God by fighting giants. David recognized that the true nature of the battle with the Philistine was spiritual. He boldly approached the giant in God's strength and in God's demonstrate, demonstrative power. The awesome power of the name of the Lord. You can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 17. You and I are given a similar opportunity when people criticize Christians or our faith Instead of remaining silent, we should defend the name of Jesus who gave his life on our behalf and faithfully cares for us day by day. We must be thirdly obedient to the authority. Now, King Saul became very jealous of David's tremendous success in battle. And he tried on a number of occasions to kill David. But despite the king's animosity toward David, David remained committed to serve Saul. 
when you find yourself in a difficult situation, perhaps you're facing criticism or persecution, you have a chance as you face this to serve the Lord. If you'll just trust Him instead of lashing out and striking back, He'll bless your efforts. You'll be serving His purpose for your life. You need to remember that you and I are to fight our battles on our knees. Not by attacking other people. This past week, we had the opportunity to go to the First Baptist Church of Lakeland, Georgia. Brother Stanley Luke is their pastor. They were in revival. And Brother Ken Hall was preaching their meeting, and he preached a sermon that really stirred in my, in my heart. He preached a sermon on the house of God being a house of prayer. And it really spoke to me. Do you think we pray enough? No, we don't. We need to get serious about our prayer life. We're to fight our battle on our knees, not by attacking other people. And then fourthly, I think we're on number four. <laughs> David learned God's unique plan by learning to wait for God's timing. You know, a lot of times we don't like to wait on God, do we? In fact, we find ourselves trying to help God make decisions for our lives. God, let me help you with this. God is God. He don't need our help. He knows exactly what he's doing. David learned to wait for God's timing. David's men urged him to kill Saul when he had a chance. But to David's followers' surprise, he refused to harm Saul. Saul was the anointed king. David determined to wait for God to give him the kingdom. Now, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been preaching the gospel for over 40 years, if you count all my lay preaching. For over 40 years. 
And in that 40 years, I have faced some hurt at the hands of people. Immediately, I felt like striking back. But I didn't do it. I waited on the Lord. And the Lord sent me and placed me right where he wanted me. That's the reason I'm here. God sent me here. And I'm thankful that I was obedient and followed his will for my life. Now the world won't always understand our decisions. But when we respond to life's opportunities and crisis that may come into our life in a godly fashion, we model the authentic Christian life. The fifth thing that David learned in serving the purpose of God was by serving as an illustration for all to read. Every morning when I do my daily devotions, coffee and conversation, encouragement for today, a ray of hope coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. Every morning when I do those devotional talks, I end that devotional talk by saying, remember, your life is the Bible that some will read today. So let others see and hear Jesus in all you say and in all that you do. David's life provides a powerful example of both the Lord's forgiveness and the consequences of sin. Although David had committed adultery with Bathsheba and arranged for Uriah's death, David repented of his sin after Nathan confronted him. God forgive him, but his rebellion had bad consequences. His life was filled with heartache and pain. Much people in our society, they want to be able to rebel against God and avoid the repercussions. Our Heavenly Father graciously forgives our wrongdoings. But listen, we will always pay the price for our disobedience. Perhaps you've never 
realize the purpose for your life. As a Christian, we all should live in such a way that our life will make an impact for the glory of God. Your attitude and your actions count for his kingdom. I pray that we all will seek the Father's will and surrender to God as he leads us. The Lord will amaze you with powerful things. The things that he'll do through your life if you'll just trust him. God has a purpose for your life. Amen? Think about that. Stand with me if you will. Lord, we thank you for this message. And I pray that we have found purpose for our lives in it. Use the message for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen.